As an introduction to smart objects, we're going to start off by creating a simple business card mock-up in Photoshop. At this stage, I'm going to be using my pre-made card design to demonstrate the process. So if you have a business card design ready, please feel free to use it when we come to that stage. I'll be showing you how to use different digital formats, so all you need is a saved file, either in JPEG, PNG or Illustrator file formats. Otherwise, follow along, learn about the principles of smart objects and come back when you're ready. Please keep in mind I'll be showing how to create shadow and texture in another video. So if you're wanting to complete your business card without the other items, please feel free to skip ahead after this video. Before that though, we need to understand why and when we need to use them and how that's going to help us when it comes to making a mock-up. So to begin with, I'm going to start by demonstrating the benefit of a mock-up versus a normal rasterized image layer. The image on top is a smart object and the one below has been rasterized. I'm going to scale them both down to a small size. When you're making a mock-up, you might be using the same design at many different scales. You might want to start off with a collage piece and then move to showcasing a single item, and for efficiency's sake, you'll probably be using similar image sizes for both. This means you need a design which can be scaled up and down with no problem. However, when we scale our two cards, we see the rasterized image has now lost its quality, whilst the smart object stays the same. This is because smart objects work by referencing another file where the image size and quality is preserved. Because of this, you can mess around with your design, change the angles and so on, but you can always return to the original quality, scale and angle. When using smart objects, we therefore also need to be aware that the image size in the file is always the maximum. If my object is only 1000 by 1000 pixels, I'm going to struggle to get it a lot bigger, so keep this in mind. Another way to get around this is to reference Illustrator files. If you have a design ready from Illustrator, a quick way of making a smart object is by dragging your file onto your board. By double clicking on my smart object, Photoshop then takes me back to Illustrator, where I'm able to change my design before saving it to allow it to update in Photoshop. Since my original file is vector format, I could also size this up if I needed to without losing quality. So the first thing I'm going to do is to save an image of a business card to work from. This will give me the proportions I need for my design. So I'm going to go to free pick, type in business card, and I'm going to download this design here. I'm going to be working on a canvas size of 3000 by 3000 pixels. As a guide, the iPad we'll be using is 2000 by 2000, so this should be more than enough space to work on. Then I'm going to make sure my DPI is 300, which will be the same as our final image. I'm going to bring in my template by going to File, Place. In this case, I won't bother sizing it up since I'm happy with the fit. To make my front card, I'm going to use the Rectangle tool. Another way of making this would be to use the Select and Fill tool, but using the Rectangle tool we have more ways to tweak the design. By pressing Ctrl R on my keyboard, or Command R on a Mac, I can also use ruler guides to make it easier when I draw my rectangle. So to begin with, I'll left click on the corner, and then click again on the bottom right to draw my shape. I'm going to go for a round corner, to do this, I go to the Properties panel and I adjust my corner size. Typically a corner of 5 is enough, I think, to get a real look of a business card, but you can play around with this until you're happy. Now all I need to do is to right-click on my layer, click on Convert to Smart Object, and now we have our Smart Object set up. To enter it, I double-click on the layer icon, and this opens up the file which our Smart Object is referencing, which I'll explain next. So if I zoom in here, we can see our round corner has been preserved. If I then place an image on top and leave it overlapping the corner, but in the bounds of our file, you'll see that when I exit the smart object, we've now lost our corner. To get around this, make sure you're in your smart object when you're clipping your layers to your original shape. To do this, I right click and select clipping mask on my image layer to bound it to my card. Now I've shown you that, I'll place my background layer in my card design. Now when I exit out of my smart object, 
and save it, you'll see my smart object has been updated. If I want, I can go back in, edit attributes like colour and layout, and my design will be updated without its position changed in the document. The last step is creating the back of our card. Instead of going through the steps again, I'll right click on my smart object and select New Smart Object via Copy. This will provide me with a duplicate smart object with its own reference file. Keep in mind if you use the normal copy and paste, your reference file will be the same for the two cards, so it's important to copy it this way. I'll double click on my layers and rename them front and back. Now I can enter my card design and edit the back to make it distinct from the front. And at a basic level, that's your business card done.